I, I realized the, you know, in business, we're always talking about the 5% that impacts the 95%. Mm-hmm. And how do you know what that 5% is? The level of clarity that I gained helped me focus, like, un- no, just know, oh, this is what I need to do. And as soon as I was able to draw that. <laughs> Hello, Empower Nation. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I'm your host, Angela Duncan. Today's episode, I get to interview Ellie Shoja. Have you ever had a time in your life, and hopefully you can relate to this, where you feel like you can't just get to that next level, like there's something holding you back, and perhaps you've been through coaching or therapy, and you just don't know what it is, and it might be an unconscious block, you're not sure what's going on. I know I have been there. Today's episode, we're going to talk about energy flows. We're going to talk about emotional blocks, the human design, and how to help you remove some of those blocks so that you can allow for abundance and energy to flow. Check out this episode. Hi, Ellie. Welcome to Empower Her Money podcast. Hi, Angela. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yes. Awesome. So before we get into our topic for today, I would love for you to kind of share some background before you found the book that we're going to talk about um, and what challenges that you were having as well. Yeah, well, my life has been a very strange one. I call it an unconventional life. My father was an international con man. I grew up moving around from country to country. I moved like 25 times from the age of nine to 12. And as you can imagine, that left an imprint on me. It left a lot of uh, distorted relationships with myself, uh, a lot of distorted relationships with money and success. I mean, when your dad is a con man, you know, you you kind of develop this strange relationship with money. And so I had worked through a lot of it on my own before I met the person we're going to talk about today uh, and and read his book. And I was very proud of myself. I thought, you know what? I came from this crazy childhood. I've healed a lot of my trauma. I've done a lot of good things. I have achieved some success. And uh, and yet I start working with him. And within a week, I'm like, holy crap, this is different than anything I've ever done. And my life starts to shift in dramatic ways. And in in about a month, I'm confident I've done as much growth as I would have done in 20 years. This Mm. is how impactful and powerful the work has been. And, um, and I love uh, being here with you because what I've realized is that when you remove those internal barriers, you really start to unlock your potential for success because we think success is something that we attain through activity and, you know, different methods and, oh, this person has this formula, that person has this formula. None of that works if internally you are blocking the results from coming to you, right? So as soon as you you remove those internal barriers, all of the results, all of the feedback, all of the positive, you know, like the, uh, the abundance, the success that you're looking for has space to enter into your life, which is, which is really incredible. Yeah. It's a very interesting story. So, I mean, there's quite a few people, you know, that could say that they, they grew up in a a hardship, right? Whether that's poverty, abuse, your case, you know, you got to see some very interesting things in your childhood and we tell ourselves, you know, I, you know, I had a pretty rough upbringing too, that if we just do more of this, or if we just go to counseling and to therapy and just keep working that, you know, that's going to solve all of the things that we went through in that trauma. But it's a very different perspective of what you're talking about, what's taught in the book and, you know, your journey that has been successful on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, there's no hierarchy to the hardship we experience. We grow through adversity and a lot of us have different levels of um, of adversity that we face. The important thing that I'm realizing, you know, as I get older, 
uh, is the importance of being able to look at that and see it as a gift and find the find the gift within it and find the expansion within it because every time we our life contracts and every time we we are pushed down we're actually growing and expanding and then if you can find access to that expansion uh, you you allow so much more into your life, so much more variety into your life. And then you have a much larger range as well. You got to experience that thing that was really difficult and you've created space for this amazing thing that uh, that is the count its counterpart. So it's a it's a really beautiful dance that we get to do with life in that way. Yeah. Now, did you think that you had something holding you back or some internal blocks before going through this journey? I did because, you know, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old mm -hmm. and my businesses were always just on the brink of amazing, but never surpassing a certain level. Right. And, uh, and then I would get to a certain level of success and then everything would crumble back down. Mm -hmm. And then I'd get to a certain number of level of success and then everything would fall apart. Right. And, when you start seeing those patterns in your life, you're like, what am I doing wrong? What is what is happening under the surface, right? The It's like you have this uh, amazing car. It looks great. You've, you've built it up from ground up, but every time you go uphill, it stalls. There's something happening in that engine. There's something going wrong. And I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. <laughs> That's a good analogy. And I think that I've, I've heard this from entrepreneurs too, and not just entrepreneurs, but just people in general. And it doesn't necessarily have to come from, you know, an awful childhood. I'm sure something in your life could have existed that you went through and maybe created some of those blocks. So talk a little bit about, um, cause some of the notes that I had written down were energy flows, emotional blocks, human design. Um, so those are words that I think people kind of just throw around and talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. Go a little bit deeper into each of those categories, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. So um, should, we, should we mention who we're talking about here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Or Let's talk about the book first. Let's give them some credit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I met this person at a dinner party, and his name is Christopher Maher, and he wrote a book called Free for Life. And this person, this is a very intense individual. It's a former Navy SEAL. Uh, who whose body was falling apart by the time he was in his early 30s, like late 20s. He, you know, I thought I had a traumatic childhood and I read this book and I'm like, holy crap, how does a human being, how does a child survive what he went through? Mm. Right? I, it, it just blows my mind. And that stress, that trauma catches up with you. So he experienced what he experienced as a child, went into the SEALs. He says in his book, SEAL training was easy. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it's easy to put stress into your body. It's what's difficult is pulling the stress out of your body. And I really resonate, resonated with that when I read that. So, um, and then by the time he's in his late, 20s you know he's losing his eyesight he's losing his um his hearing his organs are starting to shut down you know he needs to get a hip replacement by the time he's in his uh, he's like 33 years old and he decided no we're not doing that i'm i'm gonna figure this out there has to be a different way and he goes down this rabbit hole of healing modalities as all a lot of us with stressful childhoods do and uh over the course of the next next decade he creates his own system that he calls true body intelligence now i get to true body intelligence uh as a 43 year old who has done a lot of work and feeling very proud of myself, right? And and I start doing his stuff, his his work, the, the different modalities, and my life starts to completely change. Hmm. Um, to answer your question, yes, there's a lot of 
a lot of different things. So a lot of his modalities are rooted in uh, the Chinese uh, medicine and Chinese meridian system. And and the idea is that the you know there's energy pathways running through your muscles, and when you experience stress and trauma you're putting that stress into your body and it blocks the passage of energy. It blocks that movement of energy. So a lot of what he does is actually remove just decades of trapped trauma that is inside your muscles. And something really amazing happens when your natural energy starts to flow as, as it should have, right? As it naturally would have if you hadn't acquired all of that all of that strain right something really incredible happens which is that you start operating within your power within who you really are within your own design and for me, how that's translated is I could never draw boundaries with people. I was terrible at boundaries. I didn't know how to do it. I, I had zero boundaries. And I oscillated as a result between drawing walls, right? It's like, you are never passing this wall, <laughs> right? And having no boundaries, just tremble all over me, <laughs> Right. So it's so I oscillated between those. And since doing his work, like it within probably a month, I was I was having a conversation and I drew a boundary and it was so easy. And I'm like, holy crap, this is what it feels like to honor your own your own preferences. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's good information. Now, you've been through this journey and you had mentioned, you know, you had some success prior to now. Mm -hmm fast forward to today talk about a little bit of you know how you've seen the growth both personally professionally in your life since you've gone through this oh absolutely the level of clarity that uh, so i uh, i feel like before going through this uh program christopher's program i was on a hamster wheel and i was doing this Efforting, 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 efforting. And then you you make these incremental uh kind of progresses. And then and then I'd get to a point where I'm like exhausted. And then it, it would just like I would I would be thrown off the wheel, you know, and I'd have to get back on the wheel and and do that whole cycle again and never really getting anywhere, never getting past where I was, right? Um the level of clarity that I gained working with Christopher very quickly, I, I realized the, you know, in business, we're always talking about the 5% that impacts the 95%. Mm -hmm. And how do you know what that 5% is? The level of clarity that I gained helped me focus, like, uh, no, just know, oh, this is what I need to do. And as soon as I was able to draw boundaries, have focus. And, and uh, he talks in his book um, about taking heartfelt action to your own benefit, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, uh, you know, I, I, I'll ask you this and I'll ask your audience this. When was the last time you took heartfelt action to your own benefit? Yeah, not very often. It, it's uncomfortable. I feel like sometimes thinking about that I feel selfish. Exactly. And yet we're constantly told, put the micro uh, oxygen mask on yourself first. Yeah. Right. Replenish yourself first. Right. Being selfish is the most selfless thing you can do, because when you have nothing to give, you have nothing to give. <laughs> right. And yet when we want to take heartfelt action to our own benefit, we feel like we shouldn't do it mm -hmm. because somehow we we are now a terrible person for not dedicating every moment of our life to uh, to martyrdom yeah uh, yeah so so my business started to change and the way i talked to people started to change the way i showed up in my business i stopped apologizing and this was a huge thing for me because i realized 
yes, I wasn't saying I'm sorry all the time. However, I was saying I'm sorry all the time with my energy. Hmm. I was constantly apologizing for existing, for being. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's interesting. These are such small, they feel like such small shifts. I'm wondering though, what percentage of your listeners right now are having that moment of holy shit? Yeah, I I apologize all the time for existing. Yeah. As if my presence is an inconvenience, my existence is an inconvenience, right? And how are we going to allow the abundance that we want and deserve to enter our lives if we have that underlying program running mm-hmm. right it's impossible right and, and we're when, unaware of it and unaware of it mm-hmm. and when that program stops running something amazing happens that you stop apologizing for your existence energetically and all of a sudden you realize that oh everybody actually does want me around and they are benefiting from me and your business just starts to take off. So I went from uh, my coaching business struggling to get clients to having so many clients that I couldn't, you know, fulfill with my time. And I had to move everybody into a group program, which is the International Authors Academy. So and all of that happened within six months. Wow. Wow. Like so you saw the shift for you because all success is energetic. And, uh, you know, I have a production background. I was a, in Hollywood. I work in LA and, uh, I, I had a production company and in Hollywood, we always talk about the overnight successes, mm-hmm. but it's always an overnight success that took a decade to get there. Right. What was that person doing in, during that decade? They were doing one thing. They were giving themselves permission. Hmm. And the moment permission was granted, they were able to collect on the success. And that's, and that's what Christopher's work does is it removes the, the parts of you that, that is um, advocating for you needing permission. It removes those parts. (laughs) So then you can give yourself permission a lot faster. It would have taken me 20 years to give myself permission to receive what is rightfully mine. Gotcha. Now, Ellie, I do want to give you a little bit of plug because um, while you, you know, Christopher has helped you kind of um, unblock a lot of things that you needed in order for you to step up in your personal and your business life been successful um, in many areas. And I would love for you to kind of just touch a little bit on your international, um, you know, Uh, the the group that you have right now, what you're doing and helping clients as well. Oh, sure. So most of my clients are people who are looking to make an impact in the world. They're coaches, they're speakers, uh, they are business owners. And uh, a lot of people who gravitate towards me have a big vision and a big impact they want to make. And uh, they do it through writing books. And I help them. I have a process that I developed while I was ghostwriting for celebrities that basically takes confusion, overwhelm, uh, writer's block out of the equation. So my clients come to me, they've been trying to write a book for a decade, and then we work together and within three to six months, they have their book. And it's the book they want to write. It's the book they're passionate about. And it's the book that's going to have the impact on their business and and on the lives of the people that they're they're touching. Uh, So I was doing this one-on-one with people getting incredible results. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I'm repeating myself a lot on a lot of the stuff. So I recorded a bunch of courses. I I put everything on tape. I have 14 hours of uh, cor- step-by-step courses that are in the community, in the academy. And every week I create a new masterclass because we cover everything from the writing of the book, publishing the book, marketing the book, and then leveraging your book 
to get on stages, to get on media and um, and basically amplify the message of your book. That's and awesome. Well, and not just here book. in the U.S., but internationally as well. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And yeah. We have, we have people all over the world who are part of the Academy and it's it's growing. It's really exciting right now. So now that you've kind of unblocked a lot of the emotional, you know, um, things that you are going through, what do you see next for you? What is your vision going forward for your company? Oh, man. So I'm going to take one step back, Angela, to answer this question to why books? And and this has a lot to do with my vision. I Why books? I believe that everything in the world that we see, that we interact with, was once an idea that was shared, right? So the idea is shared, it expands inside the mind of the person who receives it, that person integrates that idea into their own thought process, creates something new. So, and then that, when, when it expands inside your mind, it also expands inside my mind. And if that expansion happens enough, right? It builds momentum and then eventually it hits a wall through the wall of physicality and it becomes real in the physical world, right? And that's mm -hmm. every single thing, the technology we're speaking through, the uh, book you have, the glass you're drinking out of, like every single thing you see was once an idea that was shared, that expanded, that broke through the wall of physicality and became real. Now, I believe that the most effective idea sharing device is a book. A book is mind control. A book is telepathy. A book is time travel. A book allows you to really integrate and understand the ideas within your mind with such clarity that they can be transferred to another human being so they can continue expanding. It is such a powerful thing. And if we empower people who have a grand vision for the world to write and share books. And then we give them the tools to actually make their books successful. So find the audiences who are going to benefit from those books. I believe that this is how we change the world. Hmm. So what is my grand vision is to get as many people to write books as possible. I have this goal. I want to have 10,000 books written and distributed in a grand way uh, within the Academy. So that's, that's mm -hmm. my, my big goal. That's awesome. I love that too. And I love books. And I think, you know, no matter which culture you're in or what class system you're, you know, might mm -hmm. be in, hopefully most of the world still has some type of access to books that we can just share with each other. And it's, it's nice to be able to do that too. So I love that. Awesome. Ellie, if our audience wants to get in touch with, we'll start with Christopher, what's the yeah. best way for him, for our audience to find his book and learn more about what he's doing? Yeah. So go to True Body Intelligence dot com. Especially if you are looking to change your life, if you have a hard time, you know, let's say you've been on this path for a long time and you've tried everything and there's still, you still are stuck in some aspect of your life. I guarantee you this, this guy is going to remove whatever's in your way. He's going to identify it and he's going to remove it. He's done it for me. I'm like, I'm a walking testimonial for him and I cannot be more over the moon that I found him. So it's going to be life-changing for you. Go to truebodyintelligence.com and, and yeah, connect with him. It's, he's doing this work now and what a gift that is, that, that he is alive on this planet right now doing this work. And at the same time that you need him, that is that's really amazing. Awesome. And Ellie, for the audience that wants to help you on your mission, how do they reach you? Yeah, you can join the Academy and write your book at myauthorsacademy.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Ellie, today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Angela. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you.
Thank you for listening to Empower Her Money podcast. I am grateful for you. Please make sure to leave us a five-star review, like this podcast, share it, subscribe, and let's keep teaching others how to take control and be empowered with their finances.